Hi, Susie Rhodes here with Past Masters. Welcome to this week's Math Made Easy. This week, our topic will be standard deviation. It will help you to understand this topic if you are taking your Series 65 or Series 66 exam. Standard deviation measures the amount of variability or dispersion around an average. It is the mean of the means. The larger the dispersion, the higher the standard deviation. The lower the standard deviation, the lower the variability, the lower the risk. A conservative investor would be best served with a lower standard deviation. Standard deviation is a statistic that measures the dispersion of returns relative to the mean and is calculated as the square root of the variance. Thankfully, we don't have to do the actual math, but we have to understand the concept of standard deviation. Think of a bell-shaped curve. Remember bell-shaped curves? Sort of, kind of, <laughs> a little bit. So pretend I can draw. This is an example of a bell-shaped curve. The higher the deviation, the flatter the curve. The lower the deviation, the taller the curve, the less the variability is from the mean. We're looking at past returns, of course. In a normal distribution, there is the empirical rule the test loves the empirical rule. The empirical rule is 68.95, 99.7. What? I'll show you. The empirical rule states that with a normal distribution, 68% of the returns are within one standard deviation of the mean. 95% of the returns are within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% of the returns are within three standard deviations of the mean. So that is what this 68, 95, 99.7, the empirical rule is telling us when we have a normal distribution. So let's look at how the test might want us to understand this concept. So a normal distribution, we have within one standard deviation, so one standard deviation on the positive side and one standard deviation from the mean on the negative side, we have 68% of the past returns covered, accounted for, if you will. Within two standard deviations on the positive side and on the negative side, two standard deviations, we're going to account for 95% of the returns historically, leaving us with within three standard deviations on the positive side and three standard deviations on the negative side, accounting for 99.7%. So this is the empirical rule. Here we have the formula for standard deviation. I am not gonna teach you how to do the formula. So you learn how to do this formula in your statistics class. If you are a business major, lots of people drop out after that class. You need to understand the concept, not necessarily the math. You don't get a financial calculator anyway, so not the math, not the math. Just wanted to show it to you. Let's practice some questions related to standard deviation. When an analyst is looking at a portfolio standard deviation, they are considering which of the following. The correlation between the portfolio and the market as a whole. That sounds like beta. The return earned in excess of that which was predicted by the equilibrium model. That's describing alpha. The dispersion of returns relative to the mean. Hmm, I like that or the relationship between the expected return and the real return. No, 
The correct answer is C, the dispersion of returns relative to the mean. Mean means average. Another question you might expect to see, portfolio A's average return is 8% with a standard deviation of 5%. If the returns follow a normal distribution, all of the following are true except. So we're actually looking for the false answer, but first let's just analyze this question. So we have the average of eight and a standard deviation of five. I expect you to use your scratch paper, draw a chart, draw a bell-shaped curve to answer a question like this. We are looking for, let's look at one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and three standard deviations. Let's see what we find. So we have 8% mean and 5% standard deviation. The center line here is the mean, the average, and the standard deviation the question gave us. So it's going to give it to you in a question. It said that it was 5%. So we're going to go determine 68% of the time. Well, we take 8 plus 5, we have 13%. And we have minus 5, we end up 8 minus 5 at 3%. So that 68% of the time, you can expect the returns to be, based on the past, between 3% and 13%. Let's check out with 95% accuracy, what can we expect? So now you're going to take the 2 and multiply it by the standard deviation, add it to the mean. So 2 times 5 is 10, plus 8 is 18%. And then we have the same thing over here, but we're just going to subtract. 2 times 5 is 10%. 8% minus 10% is negative 2%. So we have 95% of the time, the returns are going to be between negative 2 and 18%. Three standard deviations means we're going to take 3 times 5, 15%, plus 8%. We have 23%. And then we have the same on the other side. It's just a negative number. 5% times 3, negative 15. 8 minus 15, negative 7%. So 99.7% .7 of the time, you can expect the returns to be somewhere between negative 7% and 23%. We never know anything with 100% accuracy. So using that knowledge, we are now going to look for the false statement. Our first choice says 68% of the time you can expect returns between 3% and 13%. What do you think? I agree. That's true. B, you can expect 95% of the returns to be between negative 2 and 18%. Let's check. Negative 2 and 18%. True. C. You can expect 99.7% .7 of the returns to be between negative 7 and 23%. Let's check. Is that what the empirical rule showed us? Correct. Which leaves D must be the false statement, but let's read it. You can expect 100% of the returns to be between never. No, we know nothing with 100% accuracy. So D is the correct answer because D is false. I do expect you to have this kind of standard deviation question on your 65 and 66 exams. So practice. Last one. Celia has been following a company, MXP's stock, for years. It has an average annual return of 10%, a normal distribution, and a standard deviation of 7%. Using this knowledge, Celia can determine that 95% of the time, she can expect the rate of return to be between. Well, let me ask, what are we looking for? Within one standard deviation, two or three? 95% of the time, the empirical rule, two standard deviations. So take the mean of 10, 
2 times 7 is 14, so it is 24% on the positive side. And then we take 2 times 7, but this time we're going to subtract 14 from 10, and we get negative 4. 95% of the time, she can expect the rate of return to be between negative 4 and 24%. So make sure to use your scratch paper to do that. So I would have written out something like this. I would have put the mean in the center, the average, and then I would have written the standard deviation of seven. And then I would have done seven times two, 14, 24%, and then 7% on the negative side times two, once again, would give us the minus 14, 10 minus 14, negative four. So within two standard deviations. That's it for this week's Math Made Easy standard deviation, something you've got to know a little bit about to pass your Series 65 and Series 66 exams. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and turn your notifications on. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to have you as a student soon. If you have any questions about this topic, just ask me in the comments below. If you'd like to enroll in any of our programs or just check us out further, there is a link found in this video's description. Great job. Happy studies. You got this.